as you can tell by the title, I'm the Obsessed Movie Man, OMM. Can we all agree 2016 has sucked so far? We've lost so many good people in the entertainment industry, and among them was Gene Wilder. Throughout all of his films, Gene Wilder showed us his humor, joy, and wit that will never be matched. The more and more I thought about it, I've begun to realize that he was one of my favorite actors. To honor him, I've decided that I'm going to review one of his films. Which one will it be? Well, it just has to be the one that introduced me and so many other people to him, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The film is based on the book Charlie and the Chocolate Factory written by Raul Dahl. Why was the name changed? Because Willy Wonka is a businessman, kids, and he demands that his name be plastered everywhere. The real reason is because the film was being made during the Vietnam War and that American soldiers referred to Viet Cong and North Vietnamese forces as Charlie, it was feared that the public, who was accustomed to seeing the war each day on television, would not want to see a film with that name. Well, if that's the case, what stopped you from changing the name of our protagonist? I can see it now. Gerald and the Chocolate Factory. The movie was going to be a tie-in with a new line of Wonka candy bars by Quaker Oats. That would have been a great idea, but too bad the candy bars ended up tasting terrible and had a tendency to melt easily. Wonka candy does exist today, however, the Wonka bars are a thing of the past. I remember going to Blockbuster all the time and picking up a Nestle Wonka bar. True, they were literally just crunch bars with Wonka's name on it, but I happily bought it. But I'm getting off track with my nostalgia. Let's talk about the film. The mysterious and recluse candy maker Willy Wonka has hidden five golden tickets in five ordinary Wonka bars. The lucky winners will be able to take a tour of his incredible chocolate factory that no one has seen since it was closed due to spies. One by one, the winners prove to be rotten children, each one worse than the last. But the final winner is a good-hearted poor child named Charlie Bucket. All of the children arrive and meet Willy Wonka, who takes them on a tour that no one is bound to forget. There is an air of mysticism that immediately draws you in. Who is Willy Wonka? Why was the factory closed? Who is making the chocolate? In a lot of ways, it seems like a fairy tale. From the sets, the establishing of heroes and villains, and even Wonka's factory might as well be a giant castle. Speaking of our heroes, Charlie Bucket is a wholesome one. He's a good kid, but he is not flawless. He has wants and desires, but sometimes he might be a little bit greedy. But that's the thing. He's not greedy like the other kids, he's greedy like how a normal kid can get carried away with wanting things. I know that a lot of people consider him a whiner, and while I can see where they're coming from, I've never been annoyed with Charlie. Unlike the remake where there appears to be no negative traits with him at all, to the point where he doesn't seem human, this Charlie feels like a real kid. What sticks out about this film is the wide variety of colorful characters. This is a film where every character has a moment to shine, and each one is distinctly different. The other four children are delightfully rotten. Each one of them is memorable, from the gluttonous Augustus Gloop to the spoiled Veruca Salt. You simply love to hate these children. And then we have the star of our film, Gene Wilder as Willy Wonka. You never know what to expect from the man. He is extremely spontaneous and ranges from being deadpan to over the top, and I mean that in the most positive way. Wonka is supposed to be a mystery, a person where we don't know if we can fully trust him or not, and Gene Wilder pulls it off very well. He can be childlike, but can also be stern and even frightening at times. His comedic timing and delivery of lines are perfect, as well as a lot of the moments he must have improvised on the spot. It's one of his most recognizable and best performances for a reason. The sets are very impressive to look at. The chocolate room alone has some of the most imagination I've seen in any film. It looks like a lot of the stuff in there really is eatable, and it makes my mouth water every time I look at it. While a lot of the sets look really good, like Charlie's house and the candy store, some of them don't really work as much, like the invention room. I've always felt that it was kind of slapped together at the very last minute. The Chocolate River isn't all that convincing either. It really does look like brown water. Oh! Did I mention this is a musical? I didn't? Well, it's a musical! The songs in the film are all extremely catchy and memorable. I've Got a Golden Ticket, The Candy Man, Pure Imagination, and the Oompa Loompa songs. They're all wonderful. Speaking of the Oompa Loompas, let's talk about them. The design of them is very inventive and out there. They really do look like they were born to make candy. 
I know that they didn't look like that in the book, but if I ever heard of a creature called an Oompa Loompa, my mind would instantly think of this as opposed to Deep Roy or the illustrations in the book. There are quite a bit of differences from the book, one of which Dahl absolutely hated, which was the inclusion of Slugworth as a villain to tempt the children to steal an everlasting gobstopper. Truth be told, I never had a problem with this addition. It added more tension and more temptation for our hero, and how it was handled at the end I found to be really clever. Some changes made sense filmmaking-wise. I don't know how they would have done the squirrel room back then, so the geese were a good substitute. One of the changes, though, I found very strange. In this version, Wonka doesn't specify that he's looking for five children. It's just whoever gets the tickets will go on the tour. In the book, I believe Wonka was specifically looking for children. To murder. I mean... Yeah, to murder. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is a delightful and magical film that still holds up. It has tons of imagination and wonder, colorful and fun characters, an inventive and catchy musical score, charming and creative sets, and a terrific performance by Gene Wilder that will never be forgotten. If you've never seen this film, what are you waiting for? Go see Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. It's a scrum diddly umptious film. Thanks, this is an OMEM review. This is OMEM, signing out. Rest in peace, Gene.